Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 0.48% to 2024 20, 6. Ethereum is up 2.12% 2 to 1541. The markets have been having a tough time and we can see this that in the last trading session things were not so good. And why was that? It's all because of this highlighted aspect of Jerome Powell's FOMC meeting. We still have some ways to go and incoming data since our last meeting suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates will be higher than previously expected. And this is deep on page three of four. From Chair Powell's press conference, the markets reacted quite negatively to this news. Many market participants were expecting a slower pace of rate hikes and let's have a look at this particular headline. So the Federal Reserve hikes by point, well, 75 basis points signals slower increases. Well, let's look into that. Is that actually correct? Let's just do a quick search for the word slow. And we can see the economy has slowed significantly. Consumer spending has slowed. Higher interest rates have slowed output growth. But where is it despite the slowdown? Do we see job gains have slowed and it will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases as we approach the level of interest rates that will be sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation down to our 2% goal. Does it say that they are going to slow? No, this is just what they've said all along. It's important with this to do your own research and due diligence. Don't just read a news headline and say, wow, I believe that. As the US market increases its interest rate, it's expected that central banks all around the world are going to do the, exactly the same thing. And that's exactly what happened with the Bank of England. It's raised its key interest rate by 75 basis points as well. And you can see the Federal Reserve is out in front in terms of the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. Money is always chasing the highest yield and we can see that's why the British pound versus the dollar is not doing so well. And of course there are always other issues that you have to think about such as recessionary action. UK recession guaranteed with the Bank of England outlook for a half a million job losses. And the 2022 forecasted recession is deemed to be long and shallow. And it's good to get some sort of idea about what's happening all around the world. Europe is in a very different position to the US because of the current energy crisis. Why is the Fed bringing so much pain to the economic system? Because the five year and 10 year break even inflation rates and the five year, five year forward inflation expectation rate are all going off the charts. And masterclass students, you'll receive my live chart in TM4 as well as an in depth explanation. The next FOMC meeting in 41 days already has a 50.4% probability of another 75 basis point increase. The Fed was expecting a peak rate of around 5% and we can see the federal funds rate prediction of April 2023 has already exceeded that. The potential of a 5.25% terminal federal funds rate is on the cards and we can see the yields are all increasing because of this probability that yields and rates could go higher. This begs the question, how bad is inflation globally? Inflation is biting all around the world and world inflation, the estimate in 2022 is 6.8%. And when you look back at 1990, when it was around 25%, it's a lot lower, but it's still out of control. Global closures and energy crises have actually hit the world on the supply side. And the central banks are trying to seek to destroy demand within the economy. That is hitting the job markets. 
and they're not having a good time. Jobless claims remain low in a tight US labor market. The pandemic put so many people out of work. It broke supply chains globally. But there's good news for central bankers. October job growth could be the slowest in nearly two years, but unemployment remains extremely low. And we can see central bank policies already hitting the economic system. Ride-hailing company Lyft to lay off about 700 employees in the second round of job cuts. Layoffs to hit the tech sector with a force as Amazon Lyft warn of economic downturn. And as inflation bites, the remaining workers who do have a job want more wage increases. Disney's Florida workers seeking a 20% pay hike. As the union says, its hospitality staffers can't afford meals. And meanwhile, over at Twitter, Elon Musk is letting that sink in. Ah, such a punny guy. Musk eliminates days of rest from Twitter employee calendars. That's the one day off per month. Elon is also seeking to cancel Twitter's remote work policy and has he fired the entire board of directors? He can do whatever he wants. And Musk plans to eliminate 50% of Twitter's jobs to cut costs. PayPal third quarter revenue jumps as online shopping picks up pace. PayPal's net revenue jumped 12% and payment volumes rose 14%. So what is PayPal doing in response to this? It's undergoing a cost-cutting push seen as salvaging profits for the year. It's seeking to lay off people and shut offices to generate between $900 million and $1.3 billion in cost reduction. $900 million this year and $1.3 billion next year in cost reduction. And competitor to PayPal, Stripe, to cut 14% of their jobs. Stripe processed more than $640 billion in payments last year, up 60% from the year earlier. Stripe will be eliminating 1,000 positions. In other recessionary news, chip maker Qualcomm sees smartphones slump worsening. Qualcomm has implemented a hiring freeze and it's planning spending and cost reductions. But it's not all bad news. People still love their coffee and Starbucks has beaten quarterly sales estimates. All of these impacts create a structural change in the economic system. Home buyers are moving further away than ever before into rural areas and small towns. With the idea that they can do remote work, as you can see, many companies are putting an end to remote work. Twitter as an example. This kind of news analysis gives us a picture or a backdrop for why certain charts are going in certain directions. And one thing very, very surprisingly, surprising and very concerning as well, is that the VIX is continuing to drop down as the markets come down as well. This is actually really bad. Why is it bad? Because as fear comes out of the market, the market should rally up in terms of price. We're not seeing this. We're seeing a disconnection. This is really, really problematic at the moment because what we're seeing is that although the fear is coming out of the market, the markets are decreasing, which means people are concerned about a recession. The concerning thing about that is when the VIX eventually spikes up, could it literally melt the indices right down? And that will take everything with it. So where is the money going? And Masterclass students, you will have my live chart in TM6. You can see it's piling into the dollar. The dollar is gaining so much strength. And as the dollar gains strength, the entire economic system basically gets put under a lot of pressure and global systems too. As the dollar increases, you can see gold decreases. And this is all about real yields. We can see junk bonds signaling risk off, oil signaling increased inflationary pressures, yields spiking up, doing a little bit of a retracement, but definitely spiking up and bond prices coming down. 
When looking at the ACWI, the All Country World Index, we can see that it passed over a level of resistance. It's been coming up, but it's actually starting to turn down again. It's early days if this will just find support and make an upthrust. But things around the world are not looking so crash hot at the moment. But don't forget, there's always opportunity. You just need to be prepared for it. One thing to understand, when we look at the nine sell-offs and recoveries in the S&P 500 since 1966, the worst sell-offs gave the best returns. And just keep this in mind because it's really, really important if you can position yourself for a meltdown. Say a meltdown does occur and stock markets are always melting down in some shape, way, shape or form, and all markets do so. If that is the case and you are prepared, you'll get yourself on the right side of the percentage and you will do incredibly well. Don't be scared about markets melting down. Be scared that you're not ready for it. When we look across all global markets, we can see they are retracing, but the NASDAQ much, much more than most. It's really important to keep your eyes on global markets and see how they're moving around. And we can see that the Russian and the Chinese markets are both under severe stress. The S&P 500 sold off with abandon and we can see it's just slightly below a support line. It doesn't mean it's resistance right now. It could come back and retest, but the concept is the markets are under quite a degree of stress currently. The reason that we go through the mainstream news is because we need to understand how the markets impact Bitcoin because Bitcoin will impact your beloved alts. And we can see the S&P 500. It's under a key level of resistance playing out at 3741. Currently, the S&P 500 futures are 37, 22 and 75. This becomes a magnetized level. So often what you'll see is price bounds between these very, very strong resistance or support lines. Just keep that in mind. So if we get a recovery across here in the S&P 500, we could rally up to the 3741, which is not much of a rally. But if we get magnetized up higher, 3840 would and could be on the cards. So what we actually do each and every day, we anal analyze the main market because we want to see the impact on crypto. A lot of people talk about Bitcoin becoming decorrelated from the stock market. So we would think if it is reasonably correlated, if it follows the directional correlation, which is different from correlation, but if it follows directional correlation, Bitcoin would move up when the stock market moves up and it would move down when the stock market moves down. Let's check it out. Let's see if that directional correlation exists. It's looking pretty much like it. When the S&P 500 moves down, Bitcoin moves down. That's Bitcoin, of course, is the white line. And when it, the S&P 500 moves up, Bitcoin moves up, up and down, up and down. There's a fairly close association here. Please keep this in mind. It's really easy for people to say, oh, Ken, I don't care about the stock market. I'm only in crypto. If you look at it, this through the eyes of a veteran trader, you will see how important it is to bear in mind what the stock market is doing. And that's why we mark up our charts with the CTKS method. Then we check world events and check the stock markets. You can see just how incredibly important it is. Most people, perhaps 95% plus in the crypto market, don't look out to the main markets. If you look out to the main markets, you're one of the top 5%. Well done. And why have the markets gone in the wrong direction? Because the DXY has gone absolutely ballistic. It's currently at 112,980. But just keep in mind that it has reached a level of resistance after an incredible rally that's been done since the Fed minutes came out of the FOMC meeting. We can see that it's just under 113.038 resistance. And as you move up to resistance, you would expect this sideways consolidation pattern. That's what actually is happening under the hood. 
That's why crypto technical analysts always mark up their charts with the CTKS method. They want to find these strong lines of support and resistance. They want to get the X-ray vision on the markets. And when we are currently looking at the DXY, we see an inverse relationship between Bitcoin, which leads the crypto market, and the DXY. And the inverse relationship also applies to the DXY and the stock market, just at this current point of time. These relationships and associations can change. I believe in proving what I say, and when you can look at Bitcoin's price momentum, the blue line here, what you actually see is the incredible inverse nature. When the dollar sells down, Bitcoin and the stock markets absolutely rally, but when the dollar rallies hard, the markets come down. And you must be aware that Bitcoin controls the fate and direction of 99% of the crypto market. Not 100%, just 99, probably 99.5% plus. When we look at crypto market cap, total market cap, we can see we're currently 957.323 billion. And we've not been able to crunch through these smart money sell lines. Remember, this is crypto looked, the entire crypto market looked at in one chart. All, all of your beloved alts, wrapped into one neat little package with all the other alts plus Bitcoin. And we can see we're below that $1 trillion level. We're definitely in the red, but we've been trending sideways. What the market is seeking to do is to get above at least this 987 billion and take out the $1 trillion mark. But we've always got to think, what if things don't go our, our way? What if they actually go down? You have your strategies prepared in advance. But how do you do that? The way to do it is to create your daily three-dimensional risk management code. And I talk about this extensively in episode 685. Please go and check it out. The thing to understand, you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And that market return is based on your active learning, your knowledge plus your courage. The first thing you want to do is to figure out what the majority of the percentage you feel will happen to the market. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You can be right momentarily and wrong overall. But if you're right at the right time, you can do incredibly well. For example, if you predict that the market will go up, say on something like this, and the market actually trends down, this could have been the best movement that you've seen because you actually accounted for it before time. This is something really important to understand. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing with their Borsog code. You just look at it from your perspective. And the better you get and the more synchronized you get in with the market, the more magic that will happen. Because the markets penalize blame and gambling. You never want to say, oh, I'm just hoping, praying that it will go in a certain direction. You want to run the numbers. You want to see what the associations are. And we go through deep associations and many, many rules in the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. If you really want to know what is happening inside the crypto market, inside the stock markets, please check this particular masterclass out. And what you'll actually find, depending on how you structure your portfolio, you could have inverters. When the market comes down, the inverters actually could go up. This is like a form of hedging. And when we look at the greatest gainers in the top 100, Arweave is actually a good inverter. It actually tends to take off when Bitcoin is struggling. And when we look at Arweave, what is Arweave part of? Distributed computing, file sharing, storage. These can do really, really well. Just keep this in mind. And there are plenty others that do this. OKB is another top gainer. Phantom, Matic, Filecoin, and ICP. I saw the community doing really, really well on Matic. Well done, my friends. I'm just so happy for you. And when we look at the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours and the greatest losers, the greatest losers, we can see they're not really losing that much in the top 100. Let's just refresh that. Yep, they're not losing much at all. When we look at the smart money buy and sell levels, especially on Bitcoin, 
what do we actually see at the moment? We can see that Bitcoin has been rejected from the 20,766 mark and the 20,539 mark. Remember that these CTKS lines will move around their dynamic smart money buy and sell levels. What we're actually seeing is that the crypto market is seeking to break out of this very strong resistance. If it can break out of that resistance, it doesn't have much resistance above it. That could be quite good. But if it gets pulled down with the main market, we could expect the Armageddon line to get challenged. We don't really want to fall below the Armageddon line because there's not a lot of strong support below that level. And the Armageddon line is 18,942. The key is not to be scared of any particular sell-off, but to be prepared to take advantage of it. That's why doing your buy on red, sell on green code is so incredibly important. You want to try to increase your synchronization in with the market. On Friday, the 4th of November, we have 636.26 million in Bitcoin options expiring at a max pain level of 20,000. It appears that we could just momentarily breach that level. So just keep your eyes on if price comes down. But we know there's no certainties inside any particular market. We have to be aware of the three dimensions that price can go and plan accordingly. Don't tell yourself a story and stick to it. You might find that you got the wrong story. On a weekly level, we have definitely still overcome resistance and we're being supported by price underneath. Just keep this one in mind as well. Masterclass students, you get my live chart in TG34. When we look at the longs and the shorts, we can see the shorts are starting to bottom out. They're starting to gain a bit of confidence and it, the longs are coming out of the market. In all probability, they've been hit quite badly. And you can see a downward projection in price, which means at the moment, the longs are getting whacked a bit. But let's check out exactly how it's playing out. In the past 24 hours, there's been 82.5 million in total liquidations across 61,493 positions. And when we look at the past 24 hours, Total liquidations, about 58% short, so very borderline. The past 12 hours, about 62% long. The past 4 hours, let's say 66% long. And the past hour, let's go for 82% long. So the longs are getting increasingly liquidated at the current time. If you don't want to get liquidated, just don't use leverage. It's really simple. Over the past 24 hours, we can see that the shorts have been marginally more liquidated than the longs. And as the shorts come back into the market, they will seek to liquidate the longs. The longs and the shorts are always liquidating each other. Turning to the top cryptos, we can see Ethereum. And this is all about enhancing your pattern recognition. If you overlay Bitcoin's price on your beloved alts, you can see how Bitcoin's directional correlation is impacting whatever alt you're looking at. And it's important to see divergence. And we can see BNB really diverging at the moment. Well done, BNB. And this could signify actually that funds are flowing into the crypto market. So just bear that in mind. It's important that you don't tell yourself a story. Oh, the markets are going to crash or the markets are going to go up or go sideways. Just always have that concept. Let's have a look at ADA. ADA is following Bitcoin's gravity. XRP, following Bitcoin's gravity as well. Solana, also following. Doge, following. DOT is doing quite well. DOT has been very, very weak of late. It's good to see DOT out in front and doing a little bit better than most of them. And we can see Matic. A lot of people got really excited with Matic yesterday. I'm just thrilled for our community. Anytime you make profit, it's just wonderful. Well done. And if you don't make profit, you're just learning. Moving out a little bit to the next top cryptos, we can see Tron coming down following Bitcoin's gravity. SHIB is following Bitcoin's gravity. Uni is a bit stronger, but still following Bitcoin's gravity. You can see how important it is to track Bitcoin, and you will not know how Bitcoin is doing unless you look at the stock market. 
AVAX following Bitcoin's gravity, showing a little bit of weakness, but it's still above strength. And Litecoin just going for it. It's definitely light when Bitcoin was selling off. Well done, Litecoin. Link following Bitcoin's gravity, but much stronger. Atom is stronger. FTT is weaker. I thought it could be really interesting to look at the metaverse. We can see ICP, the number one in the metaverse, believe it or not. ICP is really outperforming Bitcoin. Look at this strength. It's very, very impressive. Ape is number two, following Bitcoin's gravitational pull, but with more strength. Theta following Bitcoin's gravitational pull, but with much more strength. Why is it much more? Because you can see this low and this low versus this low and this low. What about this high and this high versus this high and this high, but this one is lower. That's why it's more strength. You can see sand just correlating in with Bitcoin's directional movement, just showing a bit of weakness at the moment. Mana is very much above, stronger than Bitcoin's gravity at the current time. Axie Infinity is not doing too badly. It's stronger than Bitcoin's current directional movement. Engine Coin, just looking a bit wobbly, but stronger. And we can see Zill, Zillica, doing quite nicely. Look at that, it's forming a higher high here. Well done. But when you come to actually wanting to get into any of these, always use your rules. You want to buy when price is retracing or it's bouncing off a support line. Knowing your support and resistance lines is really, really important. If you want to know the true support and resistance lines in market, use the CTKS method. And well done to everybody who puts in their Borsog codes. Each time you do this, the market will reward your active learning and your courage. And there were also so many incredible comments about fear and courage. I absolutely love what John said. Fear is not knowing the right thing to do and then doing the wrong thing. Wow. And also a great comment from Jade. Courage is facing any adversity with the attitude that you can and will succeed. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Choose to think you can with courage. Beautiful Jade. And Oscar, so nice of you, my friend. Oscar said, to everyone going through a life pullback, the sun will come out again. Wishing you courage and patience to endure and overcome your situation. Just beautiful, Oscar. And of course, if you're going through a life pullback, know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. You have a global family here. And what a great comment about courage too, Oscar. Courage can mean sticking to one's convictions through adversity. Just brilliant. And Wabi Sabi had a really good point in this about Winston Churchill. And Wabi Sabi had a quote, Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Superb. Wabi Sabi also said, what a backward monetary system, certainly not built on positive excellence. When the Fed is looking to cause significant suffering by increasing unemployment, and we can see from the news headlines, they're succeeding. And they also drag the entire world in with that. What we actually see with government policy, a lot of times governments could actually fix the problems, but they will only act when it becomes too late and they get into these knee jerk reactions like what we're seeing now. If you have family or friends who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each and every day, seven days a week, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. And as Dan Bray said, absolutely beautiful words, Dan. You got this. You can get through whatever this is. And Ivan, I'm really proud of you. Ivan said that he's going through some hard times, but those hard times are the lesson that I have to learn for the great times ahead. And that is courage. Absolutely, Ivan. There's no set back without an equal set up. And the wonderful thing you're doing here, you're not falling into victim thinking. Victim thinking is just totally disempowering. Instead, what you're doing is you're focusing and aiming for victory. And that's what we do. 
Just beautiful. Thank you so much, Ivan. I'd just like to thank each and every one of you who commented and of course who watch as well. It's just wonderful. And if you've been sitting on the sidelines and would like to reach out and say hi, that takes courage, but it's well worth doing. And we'd love to say hi back to you. Positive excellence is the foundation for crypto technical analysis because without integrity, you will do the wrong things by people. Without decency, people will get led astray. Without kindness, we won't put others' needs in front of our own. Without gratitude and happiness, we won't feel happy. If we don't have the inner and outer peace, we will not find fulfillment and meaning. Even though our stock in trade is money, money comes last. Doing the right things should always come first. And that will take a lot of persistence and commitment because results grow slowly, just like a seed grows slowly into a plant and a tree. A really good thing that we could talk about today is determination. We haven't spoken about determination in the past. I think it's really, really important to have determination. But what is it? How does it work? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Each day we do the CTKS Creed, which primes our mind for profitability in not just the crypto market, but in life as well. When we look at the crypto market, we know the price is always moving in a wave. It's always up and down. The first line of the CTKS Creed, which is just a series of positive affirmations that you say to yourself each and every day, it just have primed that mind for profitability, but also for happiness. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I'll be contacting the Jason Rice CTKS Partial Master Scholarship awardee over the weekend. So please keep your eyes on your emails if you've applied for the scholarship that is. And I'm very specific on who I select. You must exhibit positive excellence and do your active learning each and every day. It's important to be consistent, to be determined. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram, and I will not reach out to you and say, I've got a great deal for you. The truth is that you have to do a lot of hard work in this particular market, but also in life in general. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.